I think the thing that really draws us to inquiry-based learning is to see the way the curiosity and imagination of our son gets engaged. This is something that we've noticed particularly because he's had years in school when he's been bored. When he gets bored, he can muddle through, pass his courses, but he's not growing, he's not learning, he's not developing the way he's capable of. And with Mr. Lim's classes the past two years here at Queen A, we've just been enthralled by the way his curiosity's come alive, his imagination, he looks forward to coming to school. All of this is huge watching him personally, and I think for both of us it's something that we share, I think, as teachers as well. I think it took Liam a little while, actually, when he came into Mr. Lim's class here, to accept that really he was one of the drivers of his own learning. I think he expected it to be a more conventional, more passive experience for him and the idea that he could define some of his own projects, yeah. that he could find sources, that he could do his own research and talk it over with his teammates on his project. This, once he took it for, for serious, that this was real, uh, that was a huge turning point for him and I think it makes him a more mature child but also somebody who's pushing his own limits a lot more than he would in a conventional classroom situation. I really think this project let him grow. You know, I, I watched his capacity grow, if that makes sense. Um, he took the initial question, they had to go back to the drawing board and come again uh, with a new idea, and then just the hours of research and thinking and, and kind of distilling their ideas so that they had something to present at the end. Um, and then the whole process of presenting, which was a whole new learning curve, needless to say. So that has been a lot of fun, but I, I just watched him grow. And, and I really appreciated it. I thought it was great. One of the things that we've learnt, we've actually learnt about Liam in the last couple of years has been that he's taken some responsibility. He actually knows how to take responsibility for some of his own learning. And he's, he, we see that kind of maturity in him, which is not something that I would have expected at this age. I think my son's a very social person, <laughs> naturally, but um, working with a team and, and recognizing the strengths of others. Um, and, and acknowledging that, you know, he has, he's articulate, he, he is easy, a lot of things come easily to him. But I think there's still a part where you need to still learn how to work with the team and draw everybody in and, and utilize everybody's strengths so that you do your best. And it's made it more fun for him. And yeah. I think that's really something that gets um, downplayed too much in school. And, and it should be, school should be fun. It should be a place where you kind of find the real love of learning. In the world today, you need to have a lot of different skills and to be able to be very adaptable. Inquiry-based learning, which is something they're doing at the university level too now, more so, is something that should be integrated way earlier into the student's education. At the university level, it's something that I think we then take back and try to incorporate as well. A lot of us are thinking about yeah. those modes of learning because if the expression lifelong learning is real, then that's got to mean that they're learning the habits of becoming researchers, critics, commentators, analysts, all of that for themselves. Yeah. And why not start as early as we can?